In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to test FastAPI applications using the inbuilt test client class. So I hope you find this video helpful and let's get right into it. So right here in my VS code, I have a simple virtual environment, which I'm going to activate with source env uh, scripts because I'm on Windows, but this will be the bin folder if you're on Linux. So I'll just activate this virtual environment and right after activating it i'm going to install what you're going to need for this so we're going to of course need fast api so i'm going to begin my installing fast api i'll also install uv control pass runner server i'm going to also install pytest because it's what we're going to actually use as our test runner then i'll also go ahead and install requests because with requests we can be able to make those dummy requests to our api using our client and get responses so i'm also going to install requests and right after doing that this will go ahead and install all this within our virtual environment so Now that our virtual environment has been installed, let us go ahead and install and basically create our simple fast API server. So to create our fast API server, what I'm going to do is to begin by creating a simple main.py file. And right after creating this main py file, we are going to begin by creating our fast API instance. So I'm just going to begin by importing our fast API class. So I'll do that with from Fast API, we are going to import our Fast API class. And right after importing our Fast API class, then we are going to go ahead and basically create a simple application using Fast API. So that means we shall have to first create our app instance. So I'm just going to call this app, and this is going to be equal to Fast API. And once you have this, then the next thing will be to create our simple endpoints that we're going to test in this video. So I'm going to begin by creating a simple get request. So this is going to be app.get. And then we shall basically call this app.get. And once we have this, then I'm going to simply create an async handler function by saying async dev. I'll simply call this index. And this is going to return a simple response. And that simple response is going to be our response of a simple message. So I'll say return and then provide a message, which is going to be our hello world. Now I'm also going to create a dummy post request. That's basically see how we may make a request that helps us to send data to our server. So I'm going to close this. And once we have this, then I'll just go ahead and create our post request by using app.post. And then here I'll basically create an endpoint. So I may call this slash, let me just call it slash products. Let it just be a dummy request that helps us to create a product within our API. So once you have that, then the next thing I can do is to maybe go ahead and create its request handler function. So I'll do this with async dev, and then I'll provide the name, which is going to be create, and then I'll say product. And once I have that, then of course we know that each post request has to have some data that it takes to the server. Now we'll create a simple class. So I'll pass this for now. So let us go ahead and create that class, that PyIdentic class that's going to allow us to basically validate the data that we send onto our server. So to do that, I'll just come at the top right here and say from uh, PyIdentic, we are going to import our base model class and once you put this base model class i'm just simply going to come right here and say class and this is going to be our product class so this class will be created from our base model sorry for that so this will be base model and once you have that then you can provide the various attributes that each of the products will have so the product is going to have a name which is going to be a string 
and that product will also have a price. So this price will also be uh, an integer. So once we have this, let me try to organize this a little bit. So we have name and price on each of our products. We shall also need to provide the product data as part of our request. So I'll just pass it in here. So I'll say product data, and this will be of type product. And once we have this, then the next thing will be to determine what kind of response or what we're going to carry out within our request. So for now, all we can do is to just return because we don't have a database or so what, and this is basically a demo. So I'll just basically return a simple dictionary, and this will have the name of the product, which is going to be the name got from the product data dot. In this case, we can get name, and you can also do the same thing by saying price is going to be equal to our product data dot price. So once we've got this, so we have two API endpoints that we're going to test using our test client class. So the way I'm going to do that is by basically creating a test file that we are going to use to write our tests. And this test, uh, using PyTest, we shall be able to carry out those tests and be able to return the appropriate responses and be able to get to run and see if our API endpoints work the way they should. So I'm going to save, and when I save this, I'll go just within this folder, and then all I have to do is to create a simple file. So each time we are creating a test file, when you're going to use PyTest as our test runner, we need to start by using test and then underscore, then the name of whatever I want to test. So in this case, I may say test main.py. So once I've done that, then the next thing is going to be to create our client, which is basically an object that we use to carry out all these API requests. So I'll begin by importing our API test client class from uh, first API. So I'll say from first API, we are going to import our, so it's, this is actually from first API dot, dot test client we can import our test client class. And once we have our test client class, the next thing is going to be to create its instance. So this is going to be equal to our test client. Now this test client class takes in an app as the first, ins as the first attribute. So this app is basically what we created as our first API instance. So I'll just come and say app is equal to so therefore, we shall have to access this app instance we created right here in our first API. So I'll begin and I'll come right here and say that this is going to be equal to app. And once you have it, we have to import it. So I'll come and say from main, we are going to import our app instance. And once you have our app instance, now I'll simply go ahead and all I'll do is to just come right here and say, that we are going to write the tests by using simple functions that we can call our test cases. So the way we write a test case is by basically coming and saying def test and then describe whatever we want to test. So we can write test whatever that we want to test. So in this case, I'm going to write test uh, index and let's say returns, uh, let me just close this for now. So this is going to be test returns correct response, and I'll basically call this our function. Now, the first thing we shall have to do if we want to test our index route is to create a response object. So this response object is the one that helps us to create a request to our server using our client. So the way I'm going to do that is by creating a variable called our response, and this is going to be equal to client, dot in this case to be get and once we have this then we can go ahead and assert for the different attributes that we want to get from our response so i can use the assert keyword and then i specify that we want to check if the response status code so if that status code is equal to what we we expect to get as our status code. So in this case, I'll first import our status module from first API. So I'll just come and say from our first API, we are going to import our status. And once I have that, then I can simply come right here and say that you want to access uh, 
status dot http 200 okay meaning that this will actually give us our status code of 200 okay another thing that we may want to test is basically going to be the data that is returned via json so i'm going to be coming here and saying assert and in this case we're going to assert response to json to check if the response json that is returned is the same as what we are uh, what we expect to be returned so in this case we expect that this endpoint is going to return a simple message of let's say hello world so i'll just come right here and say hello world and when i save i'm going to close this for now now let us try to run our test now since we installed pytest within our virtual environment we expect that if we have valid tests that can run PyTest is going to run these tests. So I'll pull up my terminal right here. I'm going to close some of the terminals I have right here. And basically, go ahead and run our PyTest with PyTest. So once you have PyTest installed, it will look in our folder, in our project folder, and look for any valid test that it can run, and then return for us results. So when I run PyTest, this is going to go ahead and look through our folder, collect the test file, which is test.main.py, test and then it will see that we've written so far one test case, which is the one for testing our index endpoint. And since this is actually returning the same exact things that we expect, it will show us that our test has actually passed. So let me try to tidy this up. Now, another thing we're going to do is to test our we're going to try to test our post endpoint that we've created right here. Now this post endpoint is supposed to return a status code for creation of an object or creation of a resource on our backend. So I'll just maybe change this to, to specify that our status code is going to be 200 or 201. And once I've done that, then we are going to go ahead to our test main.py and write that test case for that specific endpoint so i'll just come and say def test uh, create a product creates a product or something like that so i'll just basically write this simple test case and i'll begin by creating our response which is going to be the same it's going to be client but since this is a post request it's going to be client.post so in this case i'll come and say client.post and then i'll provide a url which is going to be slash products and once we have that then we can maybe also provide data because it's also required within our request so we shall have to provide some data now since this data is to be sent as json we shall have to specify that json is going to be equal to and then i'll provide a simple dictionary here so this will have a name because you expect to send a name and the price just like you see here in our pydantic class so i'll say name and this name is going to be our let's say our price and then we can also send our price so we can say price and this price can be 5,000. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and do our different assertions. So we can say assert and then response dot status code. And this can be equal to, so we can say equals to, so in this case, we'll just access status dot HTTP 201 created. And also we can also go ahead and basically assert if the response JSON is equal to so in this case we can just maybe say um if it is equal to what we actually have here so i'll just basically copy what we have here and basically paste it down here so when we go ahead and run this let's see what is actually going to be returned as our response so when i run in this case we see that it has passed our two tests and basically what we've done is to test both a post endpoint and a get endpoint using our test client. I hope you found this video helpful and if you like this video, please leave a like, like this video, 
like this video, please, uh, because it motivates me and it also helps me to basically go up in the algorithm. If you've enjoyed and liked this video, please leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.